Hey you all there virtual rafters, thanks for clicking and welcome to a quick introduction on mods available for the game of Raft. These downloads can completely change the way you experience the game from simplifying life to adding more assets on your floating structure, many of which are just wonderful quality of life upgrades when loaded up. The easiest way to get started is by visiting raftmodding.com and navigating your way over to the download for the mod launcher. This program stands alone from the typical Steam launcher and prompts the game to load up whatever mods have been downloaded to your folders. It's highly recommended to back up your current game before adding any mods, but once you've got a copy off to the side, browse through the catalog of what makers have created to help you along your gameplay. I'll be previewing several of the most popular in this video shortly, but before that let's look at the high-tech launcher for Raft and load up the game. Over the top of the regular menu screen, we get a whole second UI with the tab menus for mod organization and even servers to collaborate with other players. Under the mod manager section is listed all the mini programs installed, many of which can be conveniently switched on or off aside from a few permanent fixtures that require loading furniture assets every game. Click the load buttons off to the right to choose which ones you want to play with for this session. This menu can also be accessed in-game at any time by hitting F9. I've found that quite a few mods can be activated or deactivated while still in the middle of playing. To highlight some of these mods, I'm going to build up a little project raft on a fresh, peaceful mode game to show you how they can simplify or add to sailing life. Let's do a luxury home to show off the assets from the furniture mod. That way we can have fun being decorative and uh, play with some interior designs. I'll uh, break this down by category of what kind of utilities these mods offer and show some of the downloads that I have installed as we build up the project. In the item spawner and script changes, the first mod example is the item spawner, which comes with its own clean menu for finding what you may be looking for and it can be popped up by hitting F8. Aside from god mode itself, this is pretty much the ultimate cheat mode and perhaps not the best to jump into until you've already satisfied a playthrough. By that time, most of the items in here will be recognizable. All gatherables, craftables, and rare items. It's really great if you're big into building and decorating projects. It's a bit like cramming creative and regular modes together. The second tab will display any of the other assets added from mods, but the third is a lot of fun. It's the menu for poof, magically as many animals as you would want to appear by rapid clicking. But perhaps even more amusing is the last tab, which can spawn entire land masses including story location. This is uh, how I film some of the footage for other videos surrounding the storyline in Raft and try to show a wider view than we usually have from the player perspective. The item spawner along with mods like Utility, which instigate god mode, are probably the most overpowered mods that we can get. Player stats for hunger, thirst, and health could be maxed out, and hostile animal attackers switched off. These kinds of changes make it a completely different game, without much survival challenge, but we don't have to go quite extreme to utilize a lot of mod options while still having to work to stay alive. Other helpful mods that can be found on the site list that only involve minor script changes are settings to keep player inventory on death, changing animal combinations that appear on large islands, adding more items to the list of materials that can be composted for biofuel, battery level indicators, and a mod to allow players to paint all craftable items. There's even more than that, you just have to keep scrolling to the bottom of the page for a few ideas about how to change your game. The second category is augmentation of some of the items in game, such as mods that will turn your sharks and seagulls into dragons. Yep, dragons, you got that right. One that's quite useful allows for player armor or tool upgrades that add bonus stats to worn gear, including the fins and oxygen mask. The offerings for titanium tools come with bonus stats that boost gathering or processing. Another that might be highly desirable is the mod that lets us change the range of sprinklers. That one's called Super Soaker. 
Several important building mods go along in this category, including diagonal pillars or building utilities. These can let the creative types move around pieces that defy the normal game's building rules. There's also one for removing the pillar requirement or ignoring collision zones so that items can be layered over the top of each other. With mods installing a glass bottom foundation on a raft is now possible with the glass walls download. This leads us to the next category of mods that are designed to make crafting easier and give us more to do through adding assets to the game, some of which have very useful functions, such as the selection of storage modifications called More Storages, which adds a range of new chests, barrels, and boxes from small to large, while Server Storage is a giant searchable mini warehouse that can be installed on your raft that has 300 spaces. If you've been playing long, then you already know that you're going to need that kind of space for gathering. Some of the most minor changes, but also the most useful, is being able to craft items even though you've left all of the items in storage boxes. There's a mod for that, in addition to ones that will also let you craft in bulk with a click. Uh, the super helpful one is called Auto Recipe Redux, which makes those collectible food menus interactive. If we have all the right ingredients to make a dish at the cook pot, we can simply point at the recipe that we want to make, and it will automatically add those foods to the top of the counter for the cook pot. One more click to set and forget. This one saves so much time, frustration, and organization when it comes to cooking. If you need more recipes to expand on all your materials, there's the Furniture Mod, which comes with two new tabs and more than 100 items for outfitting a modern-day watercraft, including sofas, beds, refrigerators, even a washing machine, and a jacuzzi tub for the ultra-luxurious explorers. A number of the cabinets and other storage containers have plenty of space for stacks of materials, including the refrigerators. The furniture items are functional for sleeping and sitting. And my personal favorite, the trampoline works, too. Stars fly out when you land and it makes fun sounds. To truly go high-tech on your boat, there's the Cinemod, which adds different sized televisions and other electronics. I have yet to be able to get it to work, but maybe one of you will do better than I did. The screens are designed to play or stream videos through them from YouTube or a local file source. Super cool in theory if I could figure that out, but for now they're just decoration. Another potential game changer for crafters and cookers is being able to expand on the size of farms by using the mod Bigger Plots to add more crop plot options, including the much larger than current game offerings, but also doesn't restrict what type of crops that can be planted in them, allowing for an assortment of large to small plants. Related to the larger crops, Benevolent Sprites is an available download to add auto farming by way of Tiny Glowing Wisp. I have not tried this yet, Trustworthy and I decided to do it ourselves, but it does look interesting from the website listing. It also includes sprites for collecting animal resources, honey from beehives, cooked items from the grills, and more helpful options in the five types of sprites that can be fished up from installing the mod. Other farming boosters include renewable farms for returning seeds for every crop harvested, and seeds from fruits that will leave us with seeds from eating crops raw. Advanced basic cultivation lets players grow and harvest extra crops in the game like berries and mushrooms. Several very simple mods on the page make changes to crafting by adding recipes for rare materials that require less difficult to acquire resources, for example, explosive goo made from fine goo, or scrap made into metal ingots. This could definitely help for making all the tools needed to survive or having lots of explosive canisters to catch animals. The real tool hack is using one of the several mods that will make all your necessary gear unbreakable, including armor, fins, and oxygen mask. This one's definitely super cheap, but it can also make the game a slightly more relaxing experience. Another fun variation of a mod is Trash Redux that will greatly increase the amount of debris floating in your raft's current. 
This faster gathering method just means being able to store a lot more or turn out crafted items more efficiently. Garbage floating by constantly to select from or catch your nets. You can even make it so you never have to swap batteries into your electronics after adding the first one to the machine. Among the most inventive mods is an electric mod for a battery powered grill and engine as well as solar panels to keep the batteries charged. If the devs couldn't think up everything or have time to add it, the players of Raft have filled in the gaps. Combinations of these mods can be a total game overhaul for how Raft is played and you can totally do things your way. Now here's the disclaimer part. As with any third party software, it is used at your own risk. So far, I've been running this for months with no issues. Trustworthy is also using them, and all mods have been working pretty flawlessly in multiplayer. Aside from the dab mod, his character gets stuck in that pose. The loader and its folders can be deleted, old saves can be inserted, but I found that my worlds still launch fine from Steam with just missing the mod asset items that would otherwise be on the raft. The game itself doesn't have mod support, so this loader uses a method that does pop up as a trojan on selective antivirus softwares. Full disclosure for safety and more about this is under the FAQ section of the Raft modding website if you're curious about how it works. Sorry, I just wanted to get the fine print out there. That aside, there's a lot more downloads that will alter gameplay in really fun ways that make adventuring even more enjoyable than the game already is. Most of which work when playing with your friends as long as they're okay with installing the mod files too. On this mini project server, I'm using the aid of mods called No Pillars, which is allowing me to install all these foundations without connections or support pillars. You can already imagine how much of a difference this one rule change would make when it comes to expanding on what's possible to build and you can craft a road 20 foundations long over water without breaking. To make gathering life easier, I flipped on a double debris through more trash redux and almost unbreakable pools. This cuts down on the annoyance while accumulating twice as fast. Using the item spawner for rare items or to fast craft pieces that would be inaccessible until clearing story mode. Speaking of fast craft, craft from inventory is also switched on. Just so we don't have to run around retrieving stacks from boxes, this will cut down on organizational time. Several mods like Furniture Mod are listed in the menu as permanent and will load themselves along with the launcher when first opening the game. They'll always be present after installing, but they can be removed by deleting the mod from the launcher's folder. This applies to no pillars. You can be assured that your creations will stay safe, but if you do accidentally pull up a server without the mod, your building can break apart. Swiftly do the Alt F4 move and exit without saving to salvage. Due to the permanent nature of some mods, the crop plots and extra storage chests are also available to put somewhere in this project. Decorating with flowers is a habit that I picked up from playing too much Garden Paws, and if you're uh, super into building, I recommend checking out that title too. Oddly, the Glass Walls mod does not permanently auto-activate itself on startup. If you want your glass pieces to appear, you'll have to remember to manually load this option, which will Put glass texture options directly into your building hammer menu. They appear with the same icons as the more expensive wood option, but note that the menu marks the glass counterpart. That's how I got all these big beautiful windows into this luxury condo looking build. Per usual, I have sad paws on, which just spares us from draining our health and thirst meters while standing around doing nothing which I do a lot of when building, trying to figure out how to place the next pieces or what to craft next. As you might already be able to tell, these are just little mod differences, but they can really make the game more enjoyable to your playstyle for whatever you're doing. The Name Your Shark mod is pretty much always on, just because Trustworthy and I rotate out names for whoever is doing shark stuff. Sometimes it's a public figure, and sometimes it's the people we're forced to deal with IRL. You can find the notebook text file tucked into your game folders to swap out the names to whatever you want. Not much utility, and just for the fun of it, maybe I'll turn them into dragons, since we can do that for some odd reason. Oh, well, whatever. I'm not questioning it. I'm just gonna tinker. As if we don't have enough real-world issue threats 
survive in the game. Let's just step that up to fantasy status. The game's already awesome, but maybe you can throw together a mod combination that makes it even better for you. Now it's time to finish up the decorating and get back to sailing. For more raft related stuff, check out the playlist for story walkthroughs and analysis. The third part chapter progress is coming soon. Maybe I'll actually get caught up before the devs release the next installment of the story. Well, we'll see. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, y'all, and bye-bye.